Any questions from uh, media or anyone in the audience? Jim. Josh, uh, speaking of choppy waters, can you give us an idea of how many or how difficult it was to get all of these different accounting systems speaking on the same page? Uh, the question was uh, how complicated and difficult uh, has it been to get all the different accounting systems uh, on one page? It's very difficult. Uh, that's our main obstacle. So you have 3,962 local governments and school districts in the state of Ohio. Uh, about 1,800 of them are on what's called the Uniform Accounting Network, uh, which is just that, it's a uniform accounting system. Uh, those 1,800 are mostly smaller local governments, townships and villages. So anecdotally, if, why don't you, so, why don't, everyone who's on UAN, why don't you raise your hand? So this will sort of give you a picture. These are a lot of the smaller local governments um, who are on UAN, so it's roughly 1,800 of the 3,962. You then have the uh, 600 school districts, which are on a system called MSAS. Did I get that right? USAS. USAS. a system called USAS which is a uniform accounting system for school districts. So that's, uh, you got there about 2,400. So 2,400 of the 3,962 are on uh, a uniform accounting system. So that begs, uh, begs the question, what about the other 1,500 or so? It's very difficult. And so what we did, Jim, is we reached out to the companies that provide the accounting software for these local governments. So we've reached out to a lot of different accounting companies and software companies we've said to them listen we're leaving this transparency initiative here in the state of Ohio can you help us map the chart of accounts essentially can you give us the roadmap for how your systems interact with the expenditures and so how many how many software companies are we now uh, partnering with so there's five or six companies that represent hundreds of different accounting systems and they've helped us map the chart of accounts and so when we encounter a new a local government that has a, a new accounting system that we haven't seen yet, we're working with that local government, but we're also working with the accounting company because chances are they're going to repeat. Uh, and so, for instance, I recently had a, uh, um, a university that I met with who said, hey, you know, I think it's going to be too complicated to do this. We're on this accounting system, it's ABC, XYZ accounting system. And I had one of my staff people with me that said, you know what, no problem. A lot of local governments use that same accounting system. We already have the chart of accounts map, you can do it no problem. Uh, and so uh, it's complicated, it's, it's laborious. Um, we have a team in our office who's, who's working on it, uh, but it takes time. So when you ask the question, how long does it take to get a government online you know, once they've committed, there's not one answer to that. Uh, a lot of it depends on what accounting system they're using, how complicated it is. Uh, we're also dealing with, uh, uh, with the counties especially, uh, ensuring that no confidential personal information is published. So for instance, if you have undercover agents who are doing drug stings in the sheriff's department or you have um, you know, welfare payments and we want to make sure that we work with the county uh, auditors and others to uh, ensure that none of this information is published and so to be clear we are not publishing any information until the local government has signed off on it and so this is a partnership uh, this we're not jamming it down the throats of anyone this is a partnership and so nothing goes online until the local government has approved it and signed off on not only is the accurate to the best of their knowledge but also uh, that they've removed all confidential personal information so all the information we will see on this site is going to look the same regardless of the accounting mechanisms that the different counties used it'll be present it'll be presented in the exact way that, that you saw it. so <clears throat> that you hit the nail on the head Jim and that's the complicated nature of this is taking all these different accounting systems and putting them into <coughs> one uniform format to present to taxpayers do you have a final dollar figure on how much it's costing to both implement this and maintain it? Good question. I'm going to defer to Joe on the, the details. I can give you the sort of the 10,000 foot. Uh, the 10,000 uh, 10, foot is the cost will be determined by how many sign up. And so the uh, arrangement uh, our office has with OpenGov, uh, which is a uh, software provider that specializes in government transparency. Um, and they're the specialists who are doing the onboarding process, essentially, once we get local governments to sign up. Uh, they are then helping with the tech side of it to onboard the information. Uh, a Franken County will cost more than uh, East Muskingum schools, and so it'll cost more for larger districts and cost less for, for smaller districts. I don't know if we have a general number yet based on how many signed up. So there's a one-time upfront license fee for the state pay, and then there's the annual maintenance fee each year uh, from the board, depending on how many entities are actually Do you know what? what what, that one time what, what was what did the what, what did the what she's asking is what did the 
controlling board approved and like how much is actually been spent under that. Sure, so the, the one time fee that's on cost was nine percent, five thousand dollars for a perpetual license for the software, and then there's tiered pricing before each year for maintenance. Uh, so that ranges from like you know, anywhere from approximately four hundred thousand dollars to like twenty five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
very good to deal with. Um, the SERS pension fund has been good to deal with. Highway Patrol, we had a very good uh, meeting with them as well. And so it's really OPRS that has, that has really been the most uh, antagonistic and really just hasn't been uh, you know, truthful in their actions and words. The universities have been great to deal with. Um, pretty much every university president I've met with has turned to um, their fiscal officer. So every meeting I've had, I've ensured that there's a board member there. So I've, I've asked for the university presidents, I want to meet with the president, but also a board member and also the fiscal officer. That way we've got all the decision makers in the room. And every meeting's been positive. Uh, and each president has essentially turned to their fiscal officer and said, hey, let's figure out a way to get this done. Uh, I, mean, I think those were literally Jim Tressel's words a couple weeks ago. Ron Berkman at Cleveland State, the same thing. Michael Drake at Ohio State, the same thing. And so these are complicated uh, institutions. And so Laura specifically, none of them have committed. So none of them have made a public announcement, we are going to do this. Um, but my conversations with them have been very positive. My conversations with Bruce Johnson at the University Council was very positive. And my understanding is the at this last Inter-University Council meeting, which was, Seth, one was it? Last week, they all met, the presidents all met, and uh, essentially uh, had a discussion to advance this. Basically said, hey, we want to figure out a way to do this, but before we do it, we want to work through some details. Uh, and so some of the, I think, issues they're going to be working with on our office, with our, working with, working on with our office are, how do we deal with the hospital systems? Um, how do we deal uh, um, with student information? Those are, I think, two of the main questions they have. But I'm confident we'll be able to work, uh, you know, work, work through those issues. And uh, my hope is that uh, sometime this fall, and hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be ready to announce that the uh, universities in the state of Ohio are ready to put their finances online. The only university that's committed to do it thus far, it's actually in your coverage area, or is Central State. So if, if uh, what was their, what's their president's name? Uh, her, her name escapes me, but we had a great meeting with her. And uh, she called us, I think, about a week after the meeting and said, we want to do this. And so we've not done a public press conference down there yet because the, the schedules haven't worked out. But the only university to commit public, to commit is Central State. Um, but I'm cautiously optimistic the other ones will get there before they